Evaluate the three limits of trigonometric functions, sine x, cosine x, and tangent x. You may use the chapters below to jump to section of origin of questions and detailed solutions. Hi there, welcome to my channel Mathusiasm. Today I'm going to work out the three limits by very basic tools. The idea of this video credits go to my best friends Flora and Patrick. Thank you very much. You may want to check out other videos of calculus in the playlist. See the link above. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's look at the structures of the limits. They come from the Taylor series expansion. Let's take sine x as an example. Sine x is equal to x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the power 5 over 5 factorial minus x to the power 7 over 7 factorial plus dot dot dot. Subtract x to the other side, we get this. Notice that there's a common factor of x cubed on the right hand side. Let's take it out like this. Divide x cubed to the left hand side, we have sine x minus x over x cubed is equal to negative 1 over 3 factorial plus x squared over 5 factorial minus x to the power 4 over 7 factorial plus higher parts of x. If we take the limit of x tends to 0, by putting 0 on the right, we get negative 1 over 3 factorial, which is equal to negative 1 over 6. So we get the answer. But we're not satisfied with this argument. The reason is that there are infinitely many zero at the back. And 0 times infinity may not be 0. We're going to use the following example to explain why this is not the case. Let's consider the limit n tends to infinity 1 over n plus 1 over n up to 1 over n and there are n terms inside the bracket. As 1 over n tends to 0 and there are n terms which tends to infinity, so we get the form 0 times infinity. However, if we simplify the bracket, we get 1 over n times n, which is 1. This is obviously not equal to 0, so we need more vigorous argument to arrive at the final answer. Someone may suggest that because limit x tends to 0, sine x minus x over x cubed is in the form 0 over 0. Therefore, we may use the Pitaus rule to find the limits quickly by differentiating the numerator and denominator. Actually, limits is the foundation of calculus which gives rise to differentiation. So it might be a bit weird to do the other way around. The same applies to cosine x and tangent x as well. Indeed, there's an alternative to work out the free limits by basic tools. Let's check it out. In each part of the detailed solutions, we're going to work out the three limits one by one. Let's start with the limit x tends to 0 sine x minus x over x cubed. We should apply the famous result limit x tends to 0 sine x over x equals to 1. Because we have x cubed in the denominator, Therefore, we'll do a substitution to obtain sine cubed theta, so that limit theta tends to 0, sine theta over theta whole cube is equal to 1. We notice that the triple angle formula does have the cube term, sine 3 theta is equal to 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cubed theta. Therefore, we let x equals to 3 theta. When x tends to 0, theta tends to 0. So the limit is changed to limit theta tends to 0, sine 3 theta minus 3 theta all over 3 theta whole cube. Apply the triple angle formula, we have limit theta tends to 0, 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cube theta minus 3 theta over 27 theta cube. Now, we group the first and the last term together. This is equal to limit theta tends to 0, 
3 sine theta minus 3 theta is 3 sine theta minus theta over 27 theta cubed like this. And the second term is minus 4 over 27 sine theta over theta whole cube. Cancel out 3 and 27, you have 1 over 9. Suppose the audio limit exists, let it be L, then the first limit in the bracket is also L, while the second one, sine theta over theta, the limit is 1. So we have L is equal to 1 over 9 L minus 4 over 27 times 1 cube. Solving this simple equation, we have 8 over 9L is equal to negative 4 over 27. So L is equal to negative 1 over 6. Therefore, the limit of x tends to 0, sine x minus x over x cube is equal to negative 1 over 6, which is the same as the answer we obtained in the previous section. Now, let's move on to the limit of cosine in the next part. Out of the three limits, perhaps the limit of cosine x is the easiest to find. Limit x tends to 0, cosine x minus 1 over x squared. We multiply both numerator and denominator by cosine x plus 1 like this. So the numerator is in the form a minus b times a plus b. Using the difference of 2 squared, this is equal to a squared minus b squared. So we can simplify it as limit x tends to 0, cosine squared x minus 1 over x squared times cosine x plus 1. Now we're going to use the square identity sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals to 1 to change the form of the limit. We arrange the terms as cosine squared x minus 1 equals to negative sine squared x. So we have limit x tends to 0, negative sine squared x over x squared times cosine x plus 1. Putting sine squared x and x squared together to form sine x over x whole squared so it is equal to limit x tends to 0, negative bracket sine x over x whole square times 1 over cosine x plus 1. The limit of sine x over x is equal to 1, and we put x equal to 0 in cosine x, so the limit is equal to negative 1 square times 1 over cosine 0 plus 1, which is equal to negative 1 over 2. We've solved the first two limits, and we're going to use them to work out the limit of tangent x in the final part. In the final part, we do not have to use extra formula except the basic one, tangent x equals to sine x over cosine x. Now, limit x tends to 0, tangent x minus x over x cubed is equal to limit x tends to 0, sine x over cosine x minus x over x cubed. To simplify the expression, multiply both numerator and denominator by cosine x. So we have limit x tends to 0, sine x minus x times cosine x, all over x cubed times cosine x. As we have this result, limit x tends to 0, sine x minus x over x cubed is equal to negative 1 over 6. Compare with the form on the left, we subtract and add x terms in the numerator to get 
limit x tends to zero bracket sine x minus x plus bracket x minus x cosine x all over x cubed times cosine x. Take out cosine x in the denominator, we get 1 over cosine x. And we separate the term into two fractions, so we get limit x tends to 0, 1 over cosine x times sine x minus x over x cubed is the first fraction. While for the second bracket, we take out x as the common factor, so x times 1 minus cosine x. This x and x cubed cancel out to get x squared in the denominator. And we also take out the negative sign in 1 minus cosine x to get negative bracket cosine x minus 1. Therefore, the second fraction is negative cosine x minus 1 over x squared. Finally, we put x equals to 0 into cosine x, as well as the limits of sine x and cosine x from the previous two parts. Then, the limit is equal to 1 over cosine 0 times negative 1 over 6 minus bracket negative 1 over 2. So, the answer is equal to 1 over 3. So, we finished the limits of sine x, cosine x, and tangent x. Now, I have a question for you. Could you start with Taylor series expansion to obtain similar limits of secant x, cosecant x, and cotangent x, and prove them with basic tools only? Leave your ideas in the comment section, and I'm going to talk about that in the next video of Calculus. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me a like, share, and subscribe my channel. I'm happy to see your views in the comment section below. That's all I have for you today. I'll see you next time. Bye!